so this has been my first full week as a YouTuber and it's been a wild week. I've been posting left and right. I posted seven videos this week. The highlight being a fake ad that I made about ARC. And after I made it, I got some replies actually from the team themselves at ARC, which is awesome and it totally made my week. I'm a big fan of ARC, the product and the team themselves. And it was just so validating to have these people actually respond and comment to a video that I made. So what you're watching right now is my first weekly review. I'm hoping that I'll do this every week and I'll give an objective portrayal of what's happened this past week, where we are in relation to this goal of building a YouTube channel in six months. As a bit of an overview of what you'll see, we're gonna start by saying what happened, showing objectively the numbers from this past week. Secondly, I'll go into the major problems that I'd like to solve for the channel. The first being, uh, what is my channel value prop? Like what is the one liner? What is the brief description of what Ian's videos are about? And then the second challenge being metric stress and posting all the time and how it is that I'm gonna address feeling less stressed as I'm posting. And lastly, I'll talk about what's coming next on the channel this week. All right, so let's talk numbers. Numbers only matter with respect to a goal or the goal that you're going towards. So first I wanna say what this goal is so that I can understand if the metrics, if these numbers are contributing towards that goal. I see the first goal of the channel to establish content market fit. And I first saw this described actually by Colin and Samir, which is a YouTube channel that I, I really like, but essentially you care about three things. First, you wanna make a video that you wanna make. So a video that I have fun making. Secondly, I wanna make a video that other people have value from, that other people want to watch. And lastly, I want this whole thing to happen in an industry or in a space where it would make sense for a potential sponsor to sponsor a video so that people watching the video could get value from that company themselves. So how marketable is your content? Now, I know to find this intersection of these three things, I need to be putting as much content as I can in market. And the reason why is because the only way I'm going to figure out if I have this, this actual market fit is by actually having content in the world and getting that, that real-time feedback. Like, oh, is this something people actually want to watch? Is this something people are actually finding helpful. So in the words of one of my favorite YouTubers, Ali Abdal, it takes usually around 150 videos for a channel to be able to reach their, their niche, to be able to reach their audience. So for example, I have 71 videos currently and I produced seven videos in this past week. So with this current rate, I would reach these 150 videos by my birthday week, uh, which is calendar week 27. And I see this as a big metric, a big milestone for the channel, uh, me reaching 150 videos. It's not like there's gonna be special magic unlocked then, but I know that if I'm producing consistently, that I'll approach um, content market fit uh, just by iterating and seeing what works well for me um, and for the audience I wanna build as well. So last week I made seven videos and here we see the breakdown of the videos per content category. So as I see it on my channel, I have six different categories of videos. These are how-to videos, which are sort of long-form YouTube videos, tech tip videos, which are short explanations of a specific feature, working sessions, which are longer, hour-long sessions where I'm actually working through something, the ideas that someone would watch and join in, vlogs where I'm just doing something fun, it's primarily entertaining, sketches where the point is comedy and the point is to make a joke that would be relevant to the audience that I want to build, and lastly, updates. So this is exactly the type of video right here, me sharing my progress and thinking behind the channel. So the Notion video was a how-to type video. I also did two different working session videos, one about organizing your computer, another about Spotify. I did three different vlogs, which were all about sort of cold dipping. And then I had one that was just like an around Berlin vlog. And lastly, I did the ad parody where I took a recent ARC ad and then I redid it doing all the shots myself, which was funny and the point was to be entertaining. Now, if we look at the hours that I spent on these videos, I'll show you them here. As you can see, the Notion video, 20 hours. It took me about 13 hours for the working session video. The vlogs were the quickest ones to make. They're usually under three hours. So you see that for the three of them. And then lastly, the Arc Browser video took me around 18 hours. Now, if we map these onto the categories to see which categories am I investing the most into, you see that I have about 40 hours with working sessions. I have, you know, 20 hours with Super. We have seven hours with the vlogs and 18 hours with the sketches. And now if we look at the total views that we have per category, we have about 50% of the total weekly views that are coming from the ARC video. So the return on investment for my time in the ARC video this week was a lot more than these others. And so that, that's interesting. Also, I think the comparative views that we see for the vlogs is actually a higher return on investment per view, but they're less related to the audience that I wanna build or the audience that I wanna help to ultimately build this channel. Okay, so in short, my takeaways about the content this week were as follows. First, I think the ARC ad parody was really fun to make and I wanna invest more in creating these fake ads. Secondly, I think the working sessions in terms of time invested versus outcome was less worth it for me. And that really, I wanna divert that attention to doing more tutorial-like content, stuff like I did in the super video. 
My third takeaway is that the style of the super video I think was good for me and I enjoyed doing that. I think I need to take on topics that are more generalizable and are less specific to a very particular software. More like how do I solve a problem using software versus how do I use this software? Okay, so now I wanna talk about the biggest challenges that I'm facing. The first problem is that the value prop of my channel is not clear yet. It's not easy to describe what Ian's videos is. You can't turn to someone and say, oh, you know, Ian's videos, he makes videos about X, Y, Z. I was at a party on Friday and I was trying to describe what I'm doing. It's hard to do right now. And this is a task in messaging really to come up with a concrete vision for what my channel aims to do and how it hopes to help people. So my current most clear thinking about this is that my channel should be dedicated to three words, crush digital clutter. And my thinking here is that I wanna go into all the software that people use on a daily basis and really go through exactly how you can improve the organization and the clarity uh, by which you use those so you can feel more confident, more clear thinking, more put together in the tasks that you need to do on a daily basis using technology. I see this as a fun topic for me because I really love to nerd out on all these different tools and I just know that diving deep and understanding them better and understanding how we could all use them better would be both like really fun for me to learn about and fun to share about. The problem is that it'll also take me a bit of time to deliver on this promise of helping people actually crush digital clutter and then if I ever switch then I have this sort of sunk or invested cost I think the way to do it is just to pick it and to commit to it and just go for it so that's what I want to do here crush digital clutter we're going with it now the second main problem that I face this week is basically I've been feeling pretty stressed out posting all the time what I mean by this is that actually as I've been in the tools posting and going on my phone throughout the day, I found that I'm often checking. I'm going back into TikTok, back into Instagram to see how many people are liking, how many people are commenting. Now I'm not sitting around waiting, you know, watching and just feeling nervous about it. But as I use my phone on a daily basis, I'm also just jumping in because I'm curious and I'm excited about it. The problem with this is I found that it's generally making me anxious. And this is more than I've ever posted in my life. So it will take getting used to, but I also think that there are techniques and tactics I can do to make it have less of a psychological burden on me. What I really want to do is find a post schedule scheduler so I can detach the creation of the content and the posting of it from liveness in my life. So essentially I can finish this video today, I can post it tomorrow, and then tomorrow I can be doing my other stuff and not thinking about posting it, not thinking about going in and checking all the views. This is not to say that I don't wanna be engaged and present on those platforms. I think particularly getting comments so far has been really validating and super encouraging. And one of the coolest parts of posting all the time, connecting with these people that reach out to me who I haven't talked to in maybe a little while who feel like they can reply to my content and reach out. I think that's awesome and I plan to be there and be present. I just plan to do it more on my own schedule in blocks in the day that I have set for it rather than sort of persistently in the back. Background. So lastly, what is next for the channel this week? So two weeks ago, I went to Norway and I did this awesome, really old, epic cross-country ski race. And I'm so excited to share about that journey. I really want to do it in Ryan Trahan style, where I just share a funny uh, take on my journey. After doing that, I want to jump back into the tutorial type content. I'm also going to think about doing another fake ad, picking another ad for a company that I really like and making my own version of it. Now, if you want to see any of these videos before I post them on YouTube, you can sign up for my newsletter where I'm going to be sending out all videos before I post them on YouTube 24 hours early. If you want to see that fake ad that I made, I'll put that on the screen so you can check it out. And thank you. I'll see you next time.